Hi, I'm James, and I've been getting to know Jesus for the last 50 years. Have you ever wondered if the Bible requires us to believe in six literal days of creation? If you have, then I made this video just for you. I grew up being taught that each day was 24 hours. Then I read the Bible for myself. I found a very different story. Literally, a different story. Did you know that in Genesis 2, there's a different creation story, and it happens in a different order than Genesis 1? So I had to conclude that either the Bible was full of obvious errors, or God was making it obvious to us that he was not intending for us to take it literally. So here's that video. Thanks for checking it out. Love to hear what you think. Oh. Most of the stars we can see from Earth are millions of light years away. So if God created everything in six literal days, then the Earth is only 10,000 years old, and the night sky through a telescope would be almost completely black, because the light for most of those stars would not have reached Earth yet. And if God meant for us to read the creation account literally, here's what day six would have looked like for Adam. Let's say God created all the animals before noon. And let's say he took another two hours to create Adam and Eve. Water bottle. So that leaves Adam about six hours to name all the animals. Well, I did the math. A big day today, sunset. Time to take on that world. And even with only 8,000 animals, that would have given him only 2.7 seconds per animal for six hours straight to draw from his two hours of life experience and vocabulary to come up with a meaningful name for each of them. 2.7 seconds? That's about as long as it takes to say 2.7 seconds. I'm not saying that God couldn't have done that. You can do it. I know it's scary. But do we really suppose that God went through all the trouble of creating humans with all of our amazing abilities and human limitations, and then immediately had to give Adam flash-level superpowers to make it through his first day? Fortunately, God gave us more than enough indication that the creation story was not intended for us to take literally. And why? Because there are actually two of them, and they are both in different orders. In the first story, he created plants as green and declared them as good two days before he created humans. While in the second story, none of the plants had sprouted until after humans were created. <laughs> yeah. So was the author so careless or unintelligent as to get these major details wrong in back-to-back -back chapters? Or did God inspire the author to write both these stories in the cultural style of the time, a culture that probably used stories to convey general concepts and principles? That's where I've landed on this one. Because keep in mind that books were not actually a thing back then. So it makes sense that information was conveyed in story form so people could retain it. So here's what I believe, until proven otherwise, of course. I believe that God inspired the author to write both of these creation stories in such an obviously non-literal way that he would obviously expect us not to take them literally. Because focusing on how long it took God to create things is missing the point completely. The point is that God created things to be perfect, but Adam and Eve, representing all of us, thought they knew better than God, and chose to make up their own rules. Okay, little one. Let's get you inside before you get stepped on. That was a solid first day out.